This video is part two of a home video of our childhood. Due to popular demand, basically my sister and brother, um, after the first video was made, part two continues from our home in Ohio. Part one can be accessed by copying the link above. To very quickly recap, while my dad was in Germany during World War II, my older sister was born in Knoxville, Tennessee, about three months before dad came home. After Germany, the family was sent to Cap Cook in Pismo Beach. Here's a picture of their little one-room duplex and dad's car. Then to Fort Hood, Texas for three months, and then to Fort Orglethorpe, Georgia, where Chuck was born up in Knoxville. From 1947 to 49, the family was sent to Bremerton, Washington, where Phil was born. A cute event occurred in Washington, which was captured in home movies and was replayed a lot as we grew up. At the age of three, I got a spring rocking horse for Christmas since I was into cowboys. One night, Con Connie climbed onto it while naked and started riding it. Dad and Mom quickly grabbed the camera and filmed her, and then they put me on it with only my white shoes. Phil was spared the embarrassment as he was too young to ride it. Comes in handy. After Washington, the family was sent to uh, Tucson Air Force Base and then to Sampson Air Force Base in New York. While in New York in 1951, we got our only dog, Penny, who would be with us for 17 years and also travel to every place we would. She was with us through our elementary, high school, and even college years. Then we were moved to Tennessee and then we were sent to Great Falls Air Force Base, Montana. Dad was then sent to Korea by himself while his family returned to Tennessee. After six months in Korea, our dad was sent to Tokyo, Japan, and we were able to join him. In July of 1957, the family was transferred to Ohio, where part one of the video focused. After two years in Ohio, in 1959, we were transferred to an Air Force base near Nashville, Tennessee. One of the major events was that after selling our horse in Ohio, we got a boat and water skied on Center Hill Lake. We had this boat for six years in three different locations that we were assigned to. Here is the primary lake that we boated on while in Tennessee. There isn't a lot of movies or photos in Tennessee, but one of the highlights was playing baseball. Here is Phil, who was pretty good. We also played a lot of sandlot football, except it was on a pretty nice athletic field with outdoor lights so that we could play after dark. One of the highlights for the family was when my dad arranged for Billy Wade to speak to the men of the base church. That was a big deal. Wade was the quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams and years later would be the quarterback of the champion Chicago Bears in 1963. Today he is considered one of the greatest athletes in Vanderbilt University and Nashville, Tennessee's history. In 1961, we were transferred from Tennessee to an Air Force base in Fairbanks, Alaska. We drove all the way there by pulling a boat with camping gear in a tent with our luggage on top and three kids and a dog in the back. Note the spare tire on the bow of the boat. That is because 1,700 miles of graveled road called the Alcan Highway caused a lot of damage to tires. The road wouldn't be paved until 25 years later. There wasn't a lot of places to stop along the route and it was pretty unpopulated. 
the road was also very windy as well. This is the beginning of it. It's mile zero. It's a current photograph, and that began, began in Dawson Creek, British Columbia. We did take our time going up there, and st we even stopped at various parks and lakes and went water skiing up in Canada. Here's Phil getting on a chairlift, and there's Mom at a ski resort. Beautiful time of the year. Here's Connie. And here's a scene on the Alcan Highway as a car goes by just kicking up all that dust. There's a moose, a lot of wildlife along the way and, and beautiful lakes. There's Connie taking Penny for a walk. A little break. Lovely outdoor Alaska. Mom was always limber as she looks for food to make lunch. And there's the tent we put up every night. Entering Alaska. With Dad being a chaplain and our family having a boat, we quickly made friends with families and teenagers from the base church. We often had water ski and get-togethers where we taught people to ski and could boat on the lake late in the evening due to long days of sunlight during the summer. Mom told me everyone assigned to the base in Alaska was away from their extended families, so we embraced our friends much like a family. Nobody had wetsuits in those days and the water temperature was probably in the low 60s, but the air temperature was nice in the 70 degrees. Summer came to a close and winter began. And the base, thankfully, had a ski lodge and its own ski hill with one, not a cheerlift, but one of those pommel lifts. And you could ski as long as the temperature was above 20 below. Here's mom, she broke her leg when her bindings froze while snow skiing. And Fairbanks also had dog sled races and a lot of activities during the winter time as well. Here I am playing basketball, number 21. And there's our cheerleaders including my sister Connie on the right. Here's Phil at his eighth grade graduation after our first year in Alaska. As he entered the ninth grade and me into the 11th grade, we both got girl crazy and began dating for the first time. The winter time was when the Northern Lights were so visible because it was dark. And it's what I remember as these uh, curtains that kind of danced right over your head. This is a commercial photograph. And then after two years in Alaska in 1963, we were sent to Montgomery, Alabama and went back down the Alaskan Highway. Here's our new location. The same, pulling the same boat down the same Alaskan Highway. Two years older, setting up the campsite, cooking meals, Unpacking and taking down the tent. Here's inside our tent at night that we got into that vehicle. Dad shaving in the morning and going about our routines of packing up the car for one more day of travel. And here we are on the border of Canada as we left Alaska. 
Our first year in Alabama, Connie had graduated from high school in Alaska and went off to Milligan College in Tennessee in the fall. So the first time, our sister wasn't living with us anymore. I was a senior in high school and Phil was a sophomore. One of the cool things Dad did was lease some waterfront land and we built a raised platform for the tent and we would stay during the summer and over the weekends. It was kind of like our uh, lake weekend retreat. He even built a ramp and dock for the boat. We had our friends over and we had a great time of just being outdoors, staying the night, barbecuing and water skiing. Dad loved it when we all played and were together and had recreation together and just enjoyed one another's company. This is Phil with his girlfriend and probably his first love and unfortunately he would have to leave her when we moved to Colorado the following year. More friends from the church. Water skiing on clear glassy lake. And here's mom getting ready to ski and she's taking a ski ride with Phil. Dad and I took turns driving the boat and here they come in for a landing. After graduating from high school in Alabama in 1964, I attended TCU in Texas. One year later in 1965, our parents were moved again to an Air Force base in Colorado Springs. As there were not any lakes nearby, we sold our boat before our move that summer. Connie, after two years of college, was staying in an apartment with a friend in Alabama. Six months later, in December 1965, she moved to Colorado Springs to stay with mom and dad and got a job at the Air Force Academy where she would meet Don Meredith one and a half years later. After a year in Colorado, Phil graduated from high school and I had a summer job as a lifeguard. Phil attended TCU as a freshman while I was a junior. Here is my mom and Connie and Connie's roommate that she lived with. During the Christmas recess from college, Dad booked a Christmas ski trip at Breckenridge, Colorado, where we had a family get together. Here is mom coming down the slopes. While we were at TCU, the next year in the summer of 1967, our parents were assigned to an Air Force base in England. Connie was working at the Air Force Academy and dating Don Meredith in Colorado. While our parents were in England, Connie and Don married in January 1968 in Colorado Springs. Phil and I came up for the wedding from Texas. It was held at the beautiful Air Force Academy's chapel. In 1968, our dog Penny would breathe her last and Connie had to bury her in Colorado where she was staying. Chuck and Phil were at TCU and mom and dad were in England. Mike would later be born in Colorado Springs. Don was also sent overseas by himself to Pakistan for 15 months while Connie stayed in Colorado. In June 1969, Don returned and Connie and Don were reassigned to Hawaii from 1969 to 72 where Sean was born. When Connie and Don were sent to Hawaii in 1969, our parents were reassigned from England to San Antonio, Texas that same year. They bought a new home in a small suburb of Leon Valley on a street called Rue Francois, where Dad would retire and they would live there. Dad later died in 1999, and Mom stayed in her home until the age of 98 when she moved in with Connie in Bandero, Texas in 2019. But going back to Don and Connie's travel, in 1972, they were assigned from Hawaii to Kelly Air Force Base, Texas, in San Antonio. To the disappointment of Mom and Dad who enjoyed their company in San Antonio, in 1973, Don and Connie 
were assigned to a military base in Denver. However, after six months, Don's unit was closed down and they were sent back to San Antonio in 1974, where Don eventually retired. Don and Connie were able to spend family time together in San Antonio, and the site would hold many family re reunions in the future years. As for me, after graduating from college in 1968, I was commissioned in the Air Force and sent to March Air Force Base in Riverside, California. I married Jan in 1970 and decided to resign from the Air Force after my tour and live permanently in California. In 1974, our son Chad was born. My marriage later ended in a divorce, and in 1978, I married Greta. Mom and Dad were able to attend the wedding, and four years later, Dustin was born. Phil had a different course. In one weekend, in May 1970, Phil graduated from college, married Gina, and was commissioned in the Air Force. He was sent to an Air Force base in Laredo, Laredo, Texas, where Lance was born. He was then assigned to an Air Force base in Panama City, Florida, where Amy was born. Later, the family was then sent to Washington, D.C., where Phil got a master's degree in hospital administration and worked at the Surgeon General's office. While there, Gina and Phil divorced in 1978. Two years later, Phil met Ruthie, a nurse at the hospital in 1980, and three years later, in June 1983, Dad married Ruthie and Phil shortly after Dad had recovered from a triple bypass heart surgery. Shortly after their marriage, Phil and Ruthie were transferred to the Azor Islands for two years. Then in 1985 to 1989, Phil and Ruthie were assigned to the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. And then in 1989, they were assigned to the Medical Center at Travis Air Force Base, California. In 1990 to 1991, Phil was deployed under Desert Storm, uh, the invasion of Iraq after they attacked Kuwait, and they set up a contingency hospital for the troops there. Phil ultimately retired from the Air Force in 1991, and then he worked at Woodland Memorial Hospital through 1997, and then he served as the Assistant City Manager of Woodland from 1997 to 2007. Our family history began in 1941 with Mom and Dad, but is only one branch of an even larger family tree that includes our spouse's own family history and we are so blessed to be a part of theirs. Mom and Dad's grandchildren in order of birth were Mike Meredith with Jen and Cody, Sean Meredith with Amy, and Justin, Jordan, Brooks, and Jace, Lance Marler with Vanessa and Hunter, and one in the oven. Chad Marler with Jamie and Sable and Brinkley. Amy Backer and her daughter Kylie. And Dustin Marler. Family is truly one of life's greatest blessings.